So let's talk about Food Aid Nibs because I've never actually mentioned them on my channel before and up until about two months ago I was pretty much convinced that they were the pens that at the factory they dropped on the floor and just put back quietly hoping no one would notice that the nibs were horribly bent. But as everything would happen at about two o'clock in the morning I'm buying a whole bunch of fountain pens to review and I bought a fountain pen that had a Food Aid Nib on it. And like everything I usually forget about them because it takes about two months to arrive in Australia and upon opening it, I ripped off the cap and was like, whoa, that's a lot of damage on that nib. That nib's quite horribly bent. Oh, it's a Fude nib. Sweet, new pen. So the term Fude nib is given to fountain pens which have a nib that have been bent or upturned at the end and usually they will be bent at an angle between 40 and 60 degrees and depending how you hold your pen to the page it will change the thickness of the lines, both the upstrokes and downstrokes. The pen that I have here is a Bayor 801 and this is a pen that I've actually reviewed on this channel before and what it really is is just a Chinese knockoff of the Parker Vector. This pen I picked up for about $2.25 and the angle that the nib is bent at is about 45 degrees which is about average for Fude nibs. So the word Fude is the name given to the brush pen that was used in traditional Japanese calligraphy so obviously the first thing that I'd do when I was using my Fude nib was try some traditional Japanese calligraphy. Now I'll be upfront with this I can't write any Asian scripts because when I was in high school I wasted my time learning French and Latin, god forbid I ever use Latin ever again, but when I was trying to do my writing I was pretty much copying off the internet. So. What I'm doing is going to be absolutely awful to anyone who can write Chinese or Japanese but when I was doing my writing I could easily see how useful it could be to use a Fude nib as opposed to using a brush pen. I could see how easy it is to just change the angle of the pen but with that said remembering to change the angle of the pen is a little bit of a skill in and of itself. It's something that you have to constantly be thinking about. So while I was able to get a bit of a feeling for how Fude nibs work with Japanese calligraphy, I was certainly far from showing a level of competency. Now I have seen a lot of people on the internet make some really nice calligraphy with Fude nibs, but with that said, at the end of the day, a brush nib will do a lot better in making beautiful calligraphy. The next thing that I did was western style writing. So I held this pen at a very steep angle and I could create some regular western style writing but holding it at such a high angle was very awkward for long periods of time and the quality of handwriting that I was getting just wasn't very clean at all. And holding the pen at a regular angle provided a line thickness that was just too big to be used in everyday writing. It sank like a triple broad or more, it is just too thick. The only thing that I could really do was some imitation brush calligraphy in a western style and this sort of worked. You could get some really nice um, straight lines with it with a sort of fading effect. But when it came time to drawing any characters that involved an arc or a circle such as an O, C or a B, this pen didn't do them very well. The letters felt very flat and they lost their brush effect, pretty much reverting to the line style that I had before of a triple broad. The next thing that I did with this Fude nib was to create some art because Fude nibs are used quite a lot for art because anything can pretty much be hijacked to create art nowadays. So the first method that I did was to draw using the Fude nib, constantly changing the pen's angle as I went along. And I'm not an artist or anything close to an artist, but it felt very unnatural to keep changing the angle of the pen to create different thicknesses of brush strokes. But with some persistence I was able to pull some art uh, from it but because I had to constantly change the angle of the pen I had to be constantly thinking about it and this really slowed down the time that it took to create the artwork. Another thing that I didn't like about this method was I always had to be thinking about how thick lines should be in the future before I hadn't actually drawn them in and it meant that several times I drew a line thicker than I wanted it to be 
The next method was much more successful. What I did here was I drew the sketch using a thinner brush stroke and then I went over it using the Fude nib to emphasize important details. This was a lot quicker and because I drew in the sketch, I was able to know which lines I wanted to make thinner before I had actually ruined the drawing. But in my point of view, this is not the preferred way to create thick lines and highlight important details because when you use one thick line, you really do lose a lot of the dynamic feel to a lot of images and sketches, but this is really down to how you want the image to feel. And in my opinion, I'd much rather use a lot of thin hatches close together to create thick lines. The only real issue that I have with this fountain pen is the construction of the nib. It really looks like all they did was they got a standard bay or pen and got a pair of pliers and bent the nib and sent it on its way. And what they pretty much did here was they plastically deformed the steel in the nib and bent it. And the issue with that is I think it's a lot easier now to easily deform the nib than it would be an unbent nib. And the only reason why I'm saying this is I have sprung this nib three different times and I haven't applied that much pressure. I've tested this pen against the original bailed nib and it is very hard to spring the bail nib. It can take a lot of force. It is a stiff nib, but that pen can take a lot of force and it won't do any damage to it. You apply a little bit too much pressure with this and it really isn't all that much and the nib will be sprung and you have to turn it upside down and fix it. So that was my two and a bit months of using a food a nib. And if I'm completely honest, it's not something that I plan on using in the future, or at least as a top priority. I was using this pen to do at least one sketch every single day, just to try and get into the habit of constantly changing the angle of the pen, and it just wasn't something that I got used to. They all say you get used to it, but it's not something that I really got used to. It was a very unnatural feeling, and just slowed down how fast that I was able to create writing or art with it. And in terms of writing, I don't write with um, Chinese scripts or well, Asian scripts in general, so I can't use this for handwriting every day, and I can't write with this pen comfortably with Western scripts, and I can't create Western calligraphy using this pen. So that only leaves the category of using this pen for artwork. And usually when I do artwork, I only use um, fine liners or very fine tipped fountain pens. So anything below a medium nib from Japan. And really, I don't think that this pen really suits the type of sketching that I'm doing, because usually a lot of the things that I do involves cross-hatching, and that's really good territory for um, fine liner pens and extra fine nibs. This pen, not really. When I do my thick lines, it really erases the hatching um, texture that I like. So the only time that I really use this is for doing outlines or shading large areas. And this pen does do well when I'm shading large areas. But the thing is when I'm doing outlining, I'm not exactly sure what the thickness of line that I'm gonna be getting. Usually I'll want a very um, you know, discreet line thickness, maybe 0.5 or 0.6 of a mil. Here it's just maybe 0.5, maybe 0.6. So. In terms of using this bail pen in the future, I might not be using it. I might look at getting a Duke because maybe Duke pens are a little bit more um, higher quality. I've seen, well, after I got my Fude nib, I saw a few videos using Duke pens and I'm a little bit interested in using them. And as well as that, there are Fude nibs on other Hero pens. And as well, I've seen Fude nibs, I think, on a few Sailor pens or something, so I might pick those up. But cheap, um, you know, Bay or Fude nib, I'm not very impressed with it, and it's not something that I'm going to be using in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was just my two and a bit months of using a Fude nib.